No. RVD versus Jeff Hardy. Now, Vinny, before you recap this match, I just have to say, I grew up watching Brett the Hitman Hart, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. I named my goddamn newsletter after Ric Flair's finish. My whole fucking wrestling act was half Shawn Michaels. It's all his moves, Bret Hart and Chris Benoit. So when RVD came around, I will admit that I looked at this guy and I thought, this guy is fucking sloppy. Like, he can do some cool shit, but he does a lot of very sloppy shit. But you know what? Sometimes you just got to get your head out of your own ass. And as I look back here, this motherfucker was so over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, they should have taken this guy and shot his ass to the top. Yep. Which they didn't do. And then when they finally did, it was a disaster. But the point is, this crowd didn't give a shit about anything. And they didn't care about this match because it was WWF versus WCW. They cared about this match because fucking Rob Van Dam was in it. And Jeff Hardy's obviously a big baby face as well. But they were on fire for this fucking match. Mm -hmm. And they were mostly on fire for the bad guy, Rob Van Dam. Because he was a crowd pleaser. And in this business, when you find a fucking crowd pleaser... Even if they become a crowd pleaser on their own and it wasn't your idea, you fucking push the crowd pleaser. But they didn't. But goddamn, I watched this and it was eye-opening to me. I was wrong. So it's RVD and Jeff Hardy. And uh, my memories of Rob, uh, Brian, pretty much, I think, align with yours. He would do some very, very spectacular stuff. And some stuff he would do would always not look so good. But it didn't matter because everyone always loved him and they should have done more with him. That part I remember. But... This match is so good, and as it turns out, by sure coincidence, one of them wrestling gift Twitter sites I follow has been tweeting out some RVD stuff lately, and you watch Rob Van Dam in like 97 and 98, and you watch him here on the Invasion, and what at the time was seriously by far the biggest match of his career, and you realize this guy was so influential. And we talk about all the time about everyone, even by now, by this invasion pay per view, everyone was starting to wrestle like Shawn Michaels. And how many guys over the next 20 years try to wrestle like Shawn Michaels? There's a lot of guys out there who clearly have been trying to wrestle like Rob Van Dam. And most of them can't do it. Because, <laughs> as you know, as, as the song states, he is one of a kind. But he's in there, and I'm watching him. I'm like, this is, I'm watching a very prototypical Young Bucks match in this. He's doing super long, super complicated high spots. They're very acrobatic. They're all built around counters and 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 a thousand counters in Rob Van Dam matches. And if you, which you see, just watch an episode of Dynamite and write down how many times one guy does a counter, and then watch a 1998 episode of Raw and count the same thing, and it'll be like ten to one, easy. And the, uh, Rob Van Dam's style influenced so many young guys who are now, well, still young guys, but they're the peak. But there's Rob Van Dam is all over the business in, 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 2000, in 2020 here. So they're doing this match. And then, as always, Rob is pushed off the top rope of the dashboards for the heat. That made me smile. <laughs> Something's never changed. But they just started doing they're all this You're watching a 20-year-old show, bro. Yeah. That's why things don't change. You're watching a fucking tape. <laughs> but it never changed. Rob was If you born... watch this again in 30 years, he's going to take the same bump, buddy. Rob was born in Battle Creek, Michigan, falling off the top rope and landing on the dashboard. Yeah, probably. <laughs> So, Got pushed off his crib. Yes. So they go out and do some crowd brawling. They do some, some like moonsaults off the guardrail and stuff. They get back in. There's just a random ladder now for some reason. And Jeff climbs it, but Rob slinks into the ring and then pushes the ladder over. And Jeff spills off onto the ramp. They go brawling up the uh, aisleway. And Jeff's whacking him with a chair. And Rob is begging for mercy. He pops up as the Van Daminator. And Jeff actually does go flying off the stage. We didn't mention that. After that women's match, oh, that's later. That's why we didn't that's mention. That's later. Yeah, later. So they're 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 flying off the stage, and they finally go back in the ring, and they start doing a bunch of near falls. And <laughs> Rob does the split leg moon salt, but that gets countered by like feet to the face, and Jeff hits a DDT, and Rob takes his springboard off his head bump, and then Jeff grabs him. I don't know how many German suplexes in his life Jeff Hardy has done, but he did one here and folds Rob in half. 
And finally, it's time for the finish, and Jeff's tried everything. He says, well, there's only one thing left to try. He goes up for the senton, but he misses, and somehow the hardcore belt's in the ring. And so Rob lays the hardcore belt across Jeff's chest, hits the five-star frog splash, gets the emphatic win, and a star should have been born in one night here. Just an awesome match that unfolded from one level to the next. Everything was given time to sink in. It was paced very, very well. It was not just a random exchange of big moves with a no flow. Just an excellent, excellent, excellent pro wrestling match. I don't know if this happened or not, but I watched this and I thought Hunter's in a rehab center somewhere thinking, I can't <laughs> wait to beat this bloke. <laughs> Craig, your thoughts? This was an awesome match. Uh, Rob Van Dam is made out of rubber. Yes. I, I, I've never seen a man all his career land on his head and and uh no problems land on his head and his and get completely scorpioned backwards and this was a tremendous match somehow uh jeff got busted open i'm guessing hard way because they i think it was the van daminator oh but yeah <laughs> so I, this match it's, was it, it, fantastic it could a have lot been of time go ahead I was say, a lot of times these matches don't hold up because they because it was new then, but we've seen everyone else copy it for twenty years. Mm-hmm. This though, even though people have copied this kind of stuff for twenty years, they haven't done it as good. Yeah, this would fit uh, completely oh, yeah. on on a show today, no problem. So anyway, the show is stupid. All right, up next in a match that sounds awful on paper and was much worse in execution. Before you get to that, and mm-hmm. I can't believe you didn't watch this one. Yeah. Stacy. Well, first we had a WCW ECW locker room argument, but it was just a bunch of yelling. So I, I, I don't like yelling, so I ignored it. But then we had Stacy and Tori getting ready. Now, if you watch WWE in 2020, if you've been living through the women's evolution, if you're a young fan that grew up on the last five years, yeah, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. <laughs> Stacy and Tori are backstage. And Tori's wearing this really tight shirt. Yes. And she says, we're going to have this brawn panties match tonight. And it's too bad that we're going to win. And these WWF fans aren't going to see. And she grabs her breasts and she starts to lift them and shake them. Yeah. And she says, and I quote, they're not going to get to see my big voluptuous Breasts. <laughs> and Stacy says, "You know, Brian, that's how women actually talk." Stacy says, "You're right. You know what else we're not going to get to see? Yeah, my sexy, firm ass." Yeah. And so they laugh, Fingers and they really high happened. five. Okay, they high five. They start to leave. <laughs> Stacy goes first. Tori slaps her on the ass and goes, "Stacy." You do have a firm ass. <laughs> and off they go. I swear yeah. on a stack of Bibles, this is what happened. <laughs> All happened. I fucking wow. was almost crying. I was laughing so hard. Yeah. I was like, there's no subtlety. <laughs> no. Zero. <laughs> well, I mean, we're... even Carmella. Carmella's current gimmick is it like she's there <laughs> because she's hot and she was signed because she's hot and she wears these this dominatrix outfit or whatever, but there's at least a little subtlety. Not this fucking segment. No. Brian, was, what you have just described is, in fact, pornography. Just, yes. I was watching this on the couch, and my wife was, God bless her heart, she was in there, you know, finishing off the Christmas cards, and I'm like, looking sideways, please don't notice what I'm watching. Please don't notice what How I'm watching. How could she not? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, what did you, I mean, yeah, you, you got it, it, you got to find some way to make an excuse. <laughs> oh, no, the power's out. Yank all the cords out of the house or something. Are, are you watching wrestling? No, it's porn. <laughs> well, in this case. That's a good defense nowadays. I'll just go ahead and recap this Braun Panties match. Okay. okay. Trish and Lita versus Stacy and Tori. Wrestling-wise, it was atrocious. Yeah. Especially, like, poor Stacy's completely out to lunch. And the crowd... They were on their feet. Yeah. Like, they were like giraffes. I couldn't believe how far everyone's neck was sticking out. I couldn't believe they didn't have binoculars. Excuse me? They paid more attention to this fucking match than any match probably in years. Yeah. 
And everyone got their top ripped off, and then they ripped off Stacy's pants, and that was Corey's pants. Whoever. No, Stacy's pants. Both. No, oh, whatever. Yeah, both of them. Anyway, yeah, they, that was a match. There was one creative spot where they did a. There was. Uh, there was one creative spot where they did a victory roll, and the pants got taken off in that. Huh. Yeah, that was, Jim Ross called it the most scintillating counter he'd ever seen. Mm. Right. It was, it was positioned perfectly so that her ass is pointing in the air as Trish leans forward, grabs her pants, and pulls them up, actually. But yes. off. So the real... Excuse me, Vinny, you mean her firm ass. Pardon me. I no, that was Stacey. that was that that was Stacy. That the other one was Tori. Oh, so the one with the well, I mean, yes, the big okay. voluptuous boobs. Rest. If I'm being on, if I'm Rest. if I'm being honest, if I must maintain my credibility here as a critic and reviewer, they were both firm. Hmm. Okay, thank you. But then, as uh, Stacy, excuse me, as uh, uh, Lita and Trish are celebrating, as the back of the ramp. So the entrance for the show is really cool. There's like yeah. the big entrance ramp. Then it splits in the middle, and all the mm-hmm. WWF guys came from one side, and all the Alliance guys came from the other. It was a big but that, Y. But yes, that's a big Y. And the thing about the Y is there's a big open spot in the middle. <laughs> and so as Lita and Trish are packing Do you know up they were the ramp, building that still during the pre-show? There's like people fucking sawing and shit. <laughs> they, <laughs> they weren't done with the fucking thing yet. Well, I'm glad they figured it awesome. out. Awesome. So they're packing up. I just watched uh, because it's Christmas vac- it, for our Christmas vacation. My wife and I just watched uh, "It's a Wonderful Life." What the hell is that? It's uh, the train. Jesus. We just watched "It's a Wonderful Life," and there's a scene where George Bailey and his uh, future wife are dancing, and they don't know the pool's open behind them. They go backwards and fall into the pool. It's the same thing here with. Lita and Trish, they're backing up, and there's empty air behind them, and they don't know they're going to fall to their doom. And, like, at the last second, Trish starts to fall, and Lita turns and catches her and saves her life. And there you go. That happened, and they're fine now. Yeah. But this match did allow me to write these words. Oh, no. Mr. Ass hit a fame asser on huge erection. <laughs> I would yeah. never have been able to write that otherwise. You know, you got, you got me there, Brian. I mean, that happened. Oh, that's that happened. Yeah. So these guys all got together. So there's six of us. We got two and a half minutes. What's one cool thing we can do? <laughs> and the they thought they came up with nothing. They thought of one cool thing. What? One cool thing. And opened with it. <laughs> if you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right hand side of the screen and click join. For just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over three hundred at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.